Then before we go, a quick news update. Operation Puerto has been relatively quiet since the headlines at the beginning of the tour, which of course saw the exclusion of Jan Ulrich and Ivan Basso, among others, for their alleged part in a Spanish doping operation. Well, that part remains alleged as far as the judicial system is concerned, but T-Mobile have had enough. Last week, they sacked Rudy Pevenage, Jan Ulrich's trainer, and today they did the same to Jan Ulrich himself and his teammate Oscar Sevilla. Ned caught up with their spokesman Luke Isinger to get the official version. Well, before the Tour de France, we have received uh, information from the Spanish government that, uh, that gave us some, uh, some great doubts about the declaration that Jan Ulrich, uh, Oscar Sevilla and Rudy Pe Pevenage have, uh, have made that they don't have anything to do with, uh, with Dr. Fuentes. They asked us for some time to prove their innocence. And that's uh, the time that we gave them, with an ultimatum, of course, because you cannot have your rider suspended for the complete time. And that ultimatum passed by without any proof of innocence whatsoever. So that led us to this, uh, to this emotionally very difficult step. And Jan now faces prosecution from the German authorities, is that correct? Yeah, that's something I heard as well, but uh, th th that's something completely apart from, uh, from our decision. It's the end of an era for T-Mobile and for German cycling as well, Jan Ulrich. Yeah, that's something hard, which, which is very hard to say, of course. Eh? We, have to, uh, we have to keep us to the, to the facts. And uh, we reacted in this way, and I think uh, we're all behind this, uh, this decision. And like I said, it was a very difficult one, especially yeah. emotionally. And yeah, as you say, he has personal friends amongst these riders. He's ridden alongside Andreas Klerden and people. Will it be difficult for them? Yeah, you know, it's... For me, I've been working now seven years with him, so, but it's difficult, but you have to separate facts from, uh, from emotions. With just two days left and the race for the yellow jersey threatening to gatecrash the party on the Champs-Élysées, the time trial was the last chance to bring some definitive order to this strange, shape-changing race. The smart money was on Floyd Landis. Of course, this was the same Floyd Landis who'd been late for the start of the entire race when he missed his prologue time in Strasbourg and then had broken his handlebars in the first long time trial. So the smart money by this time was probably in something safe like the Baghdad property market. Nonetheless, he was favourite for the stage and for the tour. And the course suited him too, 57 kilometres of rolling Burgundy countryside between Le Creusot and Monceau les Mines. The best early time was set by Germany's Sebastian Lang. But Sergei Honchar, the winner of the Stage 7 time trial, was fastest through all the checkpoints. This is going to be the brand new benchmark, the time to beat at Monceau les Mines now as Sergei Honchar is into the finishing straight, accelerating, stops the clock. 1-0-7-45. This now is the face of Oscar Pereiro, waiting now for his rendezvous with destiny, or is he? He's worn the yellow jersey with great pride. He was uh, hoping to, for a top five position in the tour. Two, one, go. And here he is, Oscar Pereiro of Spain, Case de Pagna, Lille Baleares, now knows that he has to do the time trial of his life. You might just notice there, there's a little bit of the seventh, eight-hour growth there on his beard. He's not had a shave this morning. That is an old cyclist's grandmother's tale. If you're going to go for the big performance, don't have a shave because it takes that little bit more energy away from your body. So Oscar Pereira now is looking to conserve 12 seconds advantage over Carlos Sastra and 30 seconds advantage over Floyd Landis. He knows historically that he's never been able to rival these riders, but he has never ever in his life been in a situation like this he is defending himself with the yellow jersey on his shoulders Foton has gone through he didn't look good we saw him passing through there and he has gone through I can't remember now. I think about ninth place Sir Foton has gone through yeah but uh, the time gap was the important thing Phil yeah. he was two minutes 57 yeah. seconds down on Goncha Conego has gone through 2.07 that is a phenomenal performance. He's he's super motivated this afternoon. Well, Foton won't believe you, but Foton looks as though he is very, very tired. We, when we saw him go through, he wasn't firing like he was two weeks ago in the time trial. Well, Floyd Landis uh, just went through that time check there, Phil, and we're waiting for the clock to stop to see just exactly what he's doing. And for Floyd Landis, uh, it's saying that that is the new best time at 19 minutes and 45 seconds, well, and that is faster than Sergei Gonchar. Rogers, though, I think has found his legs getting a little bit better and better here. He's on Ekimov's time now at 36. He won't like that. He's now challenging Postuma's time. 
Well, we've been talking about uh, Cadell Evans trying to be the best Australian in the Tour de France since, since Phil Anderson. But let's not forget, we could be looking at two Australians in the top ten. Now, that's a pretty impressive performance. It's interesting, Paul, that he's just gone past the time of David Miller, the man who he got the time trial championships jersey off two years ago. Rival of Cunigo as well now, as Cunigo is racing for the white jersey. Good sixth place finish by Cunigo, and that'll give him the white jersey to Paris tomorrow. Well, what we're thinking here is the projected finish for Floyd Landis is going to be around about 1.0741. It's going to be very close to the time of Sergei Gonchar. And if I'm not mistaken, the information coming through to us, Phil, is that Floyd Landis and Oscar Pereiro at this point of the race are locked in exactly the same time. This is all unofficial. It won't be true. We won't understand exactly the difference between them till kilometre 34 on the second time check. The only man of the top three who seems to be faltering is Carlos Sastra. He's gone through the first check in only 15th position, minute five behind best time. 1.05 behind the best time, but 55 seconds, Phil, behind Andreas Cloden. He only had a 2 minute 17 buffer over for Cloden at the start of the day. He really does need to recover. Landis has gone behind Honcha at the second check, and he's looking at Cloden, who is pushing his luck now. Remember, there's a huge buffer between Landis and Cloden in the overall classification. If Cloden beats Landis, it doesn't mean that Landis will lose the Tour de France. But he has definitely slowed in this second sector. 34 and a half kilometers we are at at the moment, as Landis still searches to better Cloden. He's done it. He's gone through in second at 41.45. The yellow jersey battling now on the kind of roads where you have to fight with yourself, fight with the machine, fight with the surface, as he now tries to hold on as much as he can. Two minutes and 46 seconds was the loss at the 34th kilometre point by Carlos Sastra. Only one man now left to approach there. Let's get a chance here now to have a quick look. This is Oscar Pereiro looking at this point here, the time he needs to beat is 41 45 plus 30 seconds of floyd landis and he's outside of that currently but for him he has to keep going he has to think about standing up alongside his former teammate on the podium this is all this afternoon about a podium badly he has to stay in contact with the ride for, of course of andreas cloden started the day two minutes 29 seconds ahead of cloden cloden could be creating the massive surprise here this afternoon Well, Paul, as we're looking at the line here now, it looks as though Pereiro, we saw him get out of the saddle, didn't look comfortable. A big show resistance has gone now. 1.22, he's out of the tour big time here. Well, uh, 1.22 to Sergei Goncha, he's losing almost a minute to Floyd Landis, but he needs to keep the battle going on, Phil, because Andreas Cloden is doing a phenomenal job. Phenomenal in the fact that he's not too far away from taking a podium position this afternoon, away from Carlos Sastra, who seems to have crumbled. And this is a huge battle here because Cloden has just gone up a notch at every time check, and he could well be first when he gets to the finish. He's got the incentive here, you see, to catch Cadell Evans, who, believe me, is one of the best time trialists. This man can win races in time trials, and yet Cloden has closed a three-minute gap. Cloden now has put down a time here. It won't be best time. It'll come up second best time once he gets there, and then we'll see how it reckons up to Floyd Landis. But he won't uh, get in a win in the Tour de France, but I do reckon he'll be on the podium in a third place. Well, that's what he raced for here this afternoon. A little bit of urgency in his pedalling action as he comes up to the line, stops it with the second best time behind his own teammate, 108.26. 40 seconds down, but 50 kilometres an hour. This is the ride to the line now. It's the long finishing straight. Landis should slot in a bit quicker, a lot quicker than Sebastian Lang. This is the race now. He's charging for the finishing line. Floyd Landis won't win the time trial. He will win the Tour de France. This is the final break as he swings up towards the line now. 1.844. Landis races for the line. It'll be the second, third best time of the day, but it'll be good enough for the Tour de France victory in Paris tomorrow as he grits his teeth. This has gone according to plan. 1856. Landis has done enough to win the tour.
And obviously the first man out there to congratulate Floyd Landis was Robbie Ventura, who shared his thoughts with us throughout this afternoon. And I'm sure he's going to be one of the happiest men in the world alongside Floyd Landis. Look at the face here on Landis. He doesn't win the stage here this afternoon, but what he has done is done enough to take the overall lead in the Tour de France. Still two men to come, Carlos Sastra and the overnight leader, Oscar Pereiro. It looks like a battlefield out there. Carlos Sastra now getting into the finishing straight. He has done a fair ride for himself, but it's not going to be good enough to keep him on the podium, and that was something that on the slopes of the Juplan going up to Morzine, he had been dreaming about. Sastra has lost everything here on his time trial today as he races towards the line, but nonetheless, he's made a race of it, and I suppose that's good enough. 19th place for him, 4.41 behind the day's winner, Sergei Honchar. He'll do it now, he's got 53 seconds, it's counting down against him, but he's lost the Tour de France, but he's going to be second. It's his third Tour de France, twice he's finished tenth, tomorrow he steps on the podium in second place. He took the gift they gave him two weeks ago with open arms, they made the mistake, this man got second in the Tour. Remember tomorrow, it's the big day on the streets of the Champs-Élysées. Pereiro will feel mixed feelings, sad at losing the Tour, elated at getting second place. He rode well Pereiro in the time trial, good enough for fourth on the stage behind Sergei Honchar. Andreas Clerden was 41 seconds behind his teammate in second and having beaten Landis by half a minute had to be beating himself with a large stick forever letting him get all that time back on stage 17. Sebastian Lang and David Zabriskie rounded out the stage top six. Gadda Levens was eighth at three minutes 41. Damiano Cunigo an excellent 10th at 3.44, 16 seconds ahead of David Miller. Dennis Menchoff was 17th, 4 minutes 33 back. And Carlos Sastre, the big loser of the day, 20th at 4.42. Now that performance by Cunigo was enough to give him the white jersey as the Tour's best rider under 25. Marcus Furton, who led for most of the race, was just 36 seconds behind him in what was an excellent race. Sergei Honchar rode two excellent races, winner of both the long individual time trials, and he was part of the best team. Team Mobile won that competition, though not for their tactics. So for the first time in the Tour, a leaderboard that wouldn't change. Floyd Landis had the race won by 59 seconds from Oscar Pereiro, with Andreas Purden third, a minute 29 down. Carlos Sastre slipped off the podium from the second place he had at the start of the day. Had Elevens and Dennis Menchoff were non-movers. So it was pretty much all over, bar the sound bites. You said yesterday that it would be very difficult to hold on to the yellow jersey. It was difficult, but you fought hard. No, yeah, sure. It's, uh, today for me is the very, very difficult day because it's a time trial more long than my life. Uh, in, <laughs> yes, in the Star race, I, I go to block, uh, to limit, and uh, the last kilometers uh, I am very, very tired. Eusebio told to me, clothing is possible, second position, and uh, the, the, the ten final kilometers I, I, I go to limit, limit. You told me yesterday your ambition was the podium. Uh, yes, it's, it's my uh, objective is uh, podium in the second position for my team is incredible. And what a Tour de France for you! What an amazing adventure! Is the best of life. Yeah, we were of course the first week a bit down with the whole story. But we have said we want to fight, and I think that Jan can also be proud of the team because she was actually for him there. We were all top fit, all seven men, and we had with him on all the Tour to win. How did Floyd Landis react? What did he say to you when he crossed the line? I don't think he said anything, actually. Uh, <laughs> I think he, uh, I, did, I don't think he said anything. Uh, maybe, good job, yay! <laughs> yeah, again, I've, I've said many times, I, I was one of the lucky ones to be part of uh, his seven wins. I was there three times. Um, but certainly, uh, it wouldn't have been the same if I couldn't have done it on my own, so I'm, I can't tell you how I feel. I'm very happy.